up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy, 103, just finished watching the match and Barcelona beat Unanisas de Salamanca by 3 goals to 1 in the round of 16 of the Copa del Rey. Do we make hard work of it? I'm not quite too sure. I think the overall performance, of course, it was the average crap that we've been seeing this season. I don't think we've improved. I don't think we decreased. I think it was pretty much the same thing we expected and a very similar display to what we saw against Barbastro where we dominate the game and they get a couple goals on the break. Did Unionista in this whole entire game had two chances. The in the first second, the first minute, when Romeo, I believe, gave up the ball in the middle of the pitch and they had that shot that just skimmed the post and then of course their goal as well. The fact that they score first and we made a comeback, I had to give credit where it's due because I've been saying during the game in my match preview, if we can see first, I think we're toasted and they proved me wrong. Again, our goal, the first one from Ferran Torres, it was on the break, I don't know why, but Unionista can, 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 can committed their whole team forward for the corner kick and, Victor, and then I think Joao Felix uh, broke the line, put uh, Ferran Torres through on goal, 1v1, he scored it. And then you get to the other two goals, the key goals for Barcelona. Firstly, the 2-1 goal, Jules Kunde, Absolute rocket. Que golazo from about 25 yards out. He's by himself, unmarked, outside the box. Pings it, bottom right-hand corner. We need to see more of that. When you're open, because again, Barcelona like to build the ball up, especially in that final third where the arches at the 18-yard box. And there's always a midfielder there open where they can have a shot. I think even Romeo had a few opportunities in this game. De Jong, but they just don't shoot. Lo and behold, the left center back takes a shot, puts it in the back of the net. But I think in my opinion, the better goal was Alejandro Balde from the left-hand side in our own half, right on the halfway line, runs to the entire team of Unionistas down that left-hand side. He's about to cross it in. He's expecting all Balde cross, definitely gonna be blocked for a corner kick. No, goes for a shot and roofs it in the top left-hand corner. And that pretty much secured the win for Barcelona. Again, it is a win by more than one goal. The fourth time we've done it this season. The second time we've done it in the past two games. Or three games, uh, should I say. So, I'm, I'm not here to say that, oh, happy days. We, you know, got the result we wanted. We scored more than by one goal. Of course, I'm still disappointed by the overall display in this game. I think especially... In that first half where we're dominating the possession, we look, look like to create anything whatsoever. I think Fermin Lopez and Joao Felix today were shocking. And this was their chance to really make a mark on this team. They both came on as subs in the Super Cup in both games, also soon at M Madrid. They both came on, played well in my opinion, showed some sort of fight and energy. They get a start in this game. I think they were both shocking. I think Xavi was correct to sell them off. I think Xavi's substitutions today were brilliant. Uh, right in the right moment for the right personnel as well. I was a bit worried about him taking off Felix and us having only two attackers going with four midfield, but he wanted to dominate the play. He got that absolutely spot on. In terms of the starting lineup, I believe it was uh, Inaki Peñongo, Roberto, Kunde, Christensen, Balde, Romeo, De Jong, Fermin, Ferran, uh, Mark Guayu, and uh, Joao Felix. I think that was a decent starting lineup to select with. They had a few rotation there, a few big players starting, because of course, this is the only trophy you could say we have a genuine opportunity of winning christian to go, to go off at halftime a bit of a minor discomfort according to reports hopefully nothing serious there but i think overall it is the game i expected i did predict a 2-1 win for barcelona it was 3-1 so it was a bit better i think the fact that unionistas score first will probably put a damper on your thoughts on the game that's how i personally see it but I think the most important thing is that the result was secured. We have qualified for the draw tomorrow. I'll be doing a live stream for that, so make sure you guys tune in. And that was the main goal. Come in and get the job done. Same thing. It's very similar. I wish I could just copy and paste my match review for the Barbastro game in the round 32, because it was basically the same thing. A game where you expect Barcelona to dominate and win. We dominated possession. But I said we dominated the game in the sense of uh, creating chances and stuff like that. No. But we got the job done. I think uh, for Mark Guayu, uh, he got what about an hour. He looked lively. I think again off the ball, he had some great runs, great press as well, making some good movements. Had that, uh, you know, kind of scorpion uh, toe poke that was greatly saved by the United head goalkeeper with a quick reflex save from him. I think he had a good game. Him getting the nod as well. We saw Victor Roque for about 10 minutes. Looks very very rapid down that right hand side. And hopefully he can get up to match fitness and uh, get up to that you know European rhythm. And hopefully Chavi can play him more. Um, Apart from Fermin and Joao Felix playing poorly, I think everyone else has, you know, performed the performance of expectation. I think, I think Kunde, take with the goal, I don't think he had the best of games. Again, you can stay for the goal that we conceded. He should be getting that block, on the, uh, the one that before the player uh, put the final pass in. I think Christensen, the 45 minutes he played, wasn't, uh, you know, I think he's probably one of the better players, especially. He's picking up a lot of recoveries from those long balls from Unionistas. His pace, especially when he's 1v1 defending by the only Unionista player down that right-hand side. I think Balde as well, he was alright again. 
Oh, they're so indecisive in that final third. One minute, he wants to cross it, then he makes a run inside, and the player can't read him. It's difficult for players to have a connection with Balde in that final third, especially when he's so undecisive. Um, again, for his goal, it was absolutely fantastic. But apart from that, I think he played all right. I think Roberto played 90 minutes, put in a shift as well. I think De Jong, 200th game for Barcelona. I think, you know, he played all right. Again, everyone really performed to the expectations. I'm not really surprised by the performance in this game whatsoever. Did I expect better after... Uh, getting knocked out of the Super Cup, I would say so, but in the circumstances you're playing, you know, this is a Unionista were only founded not even 10 years ago in 20, 2013, I believe it was, so about 10, 11 years. This is the game of their lives. They have a full stadium, they're chanting. It's a different scenario. It's, it's not really the game to bounce back from the Super Cup. I think the, the game to bounce back from the Super Cup is the Betis game this weekend, which is going to be huge. And it's difficult for, you know, players to come in. You know, Romeo has not played in, you know, about two weeks. He didn't play since the last Copa del Rey game. So it's difficult for these players to really adapt to it. But I think they've done well. I'm not trying to defend the players here or defend the manager. I think they're definitely still under pressure. At half, at half an hour of this game, Chavi was going to get sacked. Like, it was, it was that ropey. So I'm not, you know, trying to shadow over it. But I'm just saying it from my perspective. What I expected from this game was qualification and us dominating the game. And that's what happened. So I'm not really surprised by any other means at all. Um, in terms of substitutions, I think um, Pedri came in, Gundogan, Lewandowski, Roque, they all, you know, came in put a shift. I don't even think Pedri got on the ball too, too, too much. Lewandowski had a few snips of chances. Same with Gundogan as well, especially in those final few minutes. But I do want to talk about one player, and that is the halftime substitution in Pau Kubrasi. Kept a clean sheet. When he came on, we didn't even concede. I thought he played very, very well. Had some good long balls. Did pick up a yellow card, I believe. Uh, for a uh, free kick challenge after we went 3-1 up, but look very very calm on the ball and with now Christensen being out I think he's definitely in a contention maybe to get some minutes in the next few games look very r brightly I think he did play for Barca Athletic when they lost at the Estadio Johan Cruyff 2-0 to Unionistas. So I think he played in that game So it's kind of like the level of his opponent. I thought he put in a really really good shift I looked uh, very strong good at passing good defending um, so I think he, you know Definitely a player for the future. And finally, I want to talk about Inaki Pena. Now, Inaki Pena, this game, of course, you have to give credit where it's due. Made a great double save near the end of the game. That's probably his best moment as the keeper since his Memphis Depay free kick save about, what, two months ago now? End of, um, beginning of December. Inaki Pena, for me, he is a, he's shocking. I mean, holy crap, his passing is so, so poor. I thought it was better, but my god, under pressure. Dreadful. Again, his... Aerial presence and his box leadership is just not there whatsoever. I'm not asking him to, you know, perform like an Allison or a Ter Stegen and, you know, be a leader in goalkeeper. I understand he's a second choice. He's coming in. But my God, show a bit of character. Bloody hell. He's looking so, so ropey. Get, I feel like once Ter Stegen gets back in this team, we're going to realize how good Ter Stegen was, how much we're going to miss him, and how much this team will improve as well. Yes, Ter Stegen had a howler against in Madrid in the um, first El Clasico in October. But apart from that, he's been, you know, I think he's had a good season overall. He's been, you know, the captain for the majority of the games this season. But my God, when he comes back, I think hopefully beginning, middle of February. Hopefully he plays about one or two games before the Napoli game in the Champions League. But my God, when he comes back, I think everyone will realize that difference when he gets back in the team. But overall, uh, job done. We move. I understand the performance wasn't the best, but the result is there. One by more, one by uh, more than one goal as well. And of course, a spot in the quarterfinals. Uh, tomorrow in the draw and let's just wait and see what happens in the Madrid derby uh, that's actually taking place at this current moment anyways hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you drop a like and of course subscribe down below and also of course in the comments down below let me know your thoughts on the performance uh, your player ratings or your thoughts on Xavi as well and the whole entire situation and the performance as a whole and I will see you guys next time on the channel take care and Forza Barca <laughs>